All right, hey folks, not a super fun topic, but I think it's really relevant for warriors to be able to answer. Would you die for your country? Uh, back when I was in the military, I swore an oath to defend the Constitution from all powers, both foreign and domestic, but hey, a lot is changing at an alarming rate. And so, uh, folks ask me, hey, would you die for the United States of America? Would you die for your country? Uh, and this is an important question to ask now, not because it's a fun question. This is immediately uh, kind of an icky thing. I almost feel traitorous for even asking it, uh, but I think it's important that warriors soberly approach uh, this subject. A soldier, a warrior needs to be ready to die for causes that they truly believe in. They need to be ready to kill for things that they believe in. If there's any bit of a disconnect between what they really believe and whether they live or die for it, that can really affect somebody on the battlefield. All of a sudden, when they're supposed to do dangerous work, those deeper questions can rise up and sabotage their effort to both think clearly and to perform decisively. So it's extremely relevant for a warrior to have kind of heart, mind, soul, and body all all aligned with a just cause. What would you die for? And so where some of you guys are just kind of like, hey, stick to guns, warrior poet, bro. We're going to talk about deep stuff. That's you and I, some trolls here of like, just show me gun porn. No, you go click on a different video, man. We're going to talk about stuff that's really, really important because that's who we are. Warrior poets thinking hard about life. We're living for higher purpose. We're ready to sacrifice in the defense of others. And that's our deal. We are warrior philosophers, warrior poets, right? All right, so to be able to tackle this question, let's deal with some controls. So just go ahead and give me the idea that we have a just cause, right? So terrorists unprovoke attack and they're going to keep attacking unless we keep them playing defense. So uh, just for the point of our uh, thought experiment here, assume a just cause. This has nothing to do with the past. It has to do with there is a just cause in the future for some undetermined war. Now, would you be willing to die for a country? And first we need to back up and say, well, what in the world is America? So is it one, our institutions? You know, is it our technology? Is it our corporations? Or is it is it the dirt that we're standing on? Is that what America is? Is it our border and our geography? Uh, or is it our people? right? Or is it our government? Or, or is it our ideas that make us America? What's the point of critical mass where America is no longer America, right? If it's just values driven or you look out there and you're like, oh, it doesn't look recognizable from what I remember. America is no longer. I'm like, well, what is the actual point where if this thing happens, we're no longer America? I believe what separates us from other countries around the globe is our constitution. Basically, we're saying we're one nation under God. Our rights are given to us by our creator and our government is not allowed to touch them or take away those rights because the government doesn't give us those rights in the first place. They're inalienable rights. They're ours. So uh, we have uh, the right to the pursuit of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the government is allowed to take our first and second and third, fourth, fifth amendments away. Those are protected rights. And it's the government's job to protect those rights and to not overstep their bounds. And so I would say that's the big rallying cry of what America is. Yes, it's also the people and it's the land and it's our institutions and all of that's wrapped up, but all these things aren't the same in importance. The real big weight of what America is, is I think it is our constitution. And so my point of critical mass for our country becomes, do we still have our constitution intact? Before I sat down to make this video, I was thinking about how I never swore an oath to defend America. I swore an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States from all enemies, foreign and domestic. Isn't that interesting? Uh, we could have made the oath to defend America, but I think in the wisdom of uh, the folks that were kind of founding this oath, we realized America could be a shifting target, but the Constitution is designed to be steadfast and still. So if America started to deny the Constitution, I don't follow America over that cliff. I say, nope, it's the Constitution I swore to defend. And even in that oath where, where I'm swearing to obey the president and the commanders underneath it, the allegiance is put on the Constitution, meaning if there's a contradiction between military leaders and president to the Constitution, you go with a higher allegiance point in that paragraph oath, which is 
You don't have to listen to illegal laws as the highest law of the land is the Constitution. So now back to our question, would you die for America? Well, as long as we have an intact Constitution and the idea of freedom is still accessible, it is alive, it's still, though we are less free now than we ever have before, it still stands for me that if I still see the freedom uh, pillars right there, the Constitution is still there. I say, I still think I have an idea worth dying for, though we are chipping away. And I think there is a point of critical mass where the Constitution is no longer followed and the Constitution is no longer uh, supported. And now I have, now it, we cease to be America. And I wonder. Uh, in 50 years from now, looking back, if historians will already put the end date of America someplace that we've already run past, or maybe it's now, or maybe it's a few years from now, it's really hard to figure out what in the world's happening when you're in that moment of history. I noticed with the fall and decline of the Roman Empire, many Romans still thought that Rome was standing when historians would already say that Rome had fallen. You know, if people were living in Rome after Rome's fall, and it would decline and fall some more, and then it would get sacked in the 400s, it would get sacked in the 500s. And so, uh, anyway, it, it was kind of a messy end to that empire. And I wonder if the United States is, is struggling, stooping, getting back up and toppling itself over again and again as we stumble in the dark toward tyranny and away from freedom. But I do still think, from my vantage point, we still have the Constitution. Now, this is a critical point because it's under such attack. It really means if, if that piece falls, we don't have an America anymore. Now, America isn't just the Constitution. It is the people as well. And so this is something else I would die for if I truly believed terrorists were going to come or an invading army, however far-fetched that sounds to some of you, if I believed that the people the, the families, the friends, the neighbors, the co-workers, if those people were under attack and I could defend them, those people are definitely worth dying, to, dying for as well as I'm ready to die for the idea of freedom. That's just me. Uh, I, I think I'm ready to die uh, for my oath as well. I swore an oath. And so regardless of how unattractive America becomes, if you still have the oath intact, you'll die to keep your word. That's a little bit more of an old school value of people just, I think we were a lot easier to lie nowadays versus like a hundred years ago. People would die for honor and you call them a liar, they're going to duel you 200 years ago to the death. How dare you call me a liar? And so some people's word meant a lot more. So if you're a soldier, you're a cop and you swore that oath, well, it's almost like as long as we have a constitution worth speaking of, you swore your oath. So work out your oath. That That's, that's, that's worth dying for. The people are worth dying for. The ideas of freedom are worth dying for. But man, I've just got to back up and say there is so much. I'm so grievously unhappy uh, with what I see out there in just mainstream culture in our institution of powers, which looks so hopelessly corrupt, corrupt. They're almost unrecognizable. When I look at the country that I love, uh, it is it is extremely painful to really do so with sober eyes. So um, uh, the question, you know, intellectually, uh, I think there's still some pieces to grab onto. And I think I'm still in the yes category. I think I would still die for my country depending on a few pieces. Like if it's an unjust war, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. You know, now I'm a conscientious objector. Uh, to shut down ISIS, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll play that. Sure, I'll die for that. Uh, anyway, um, it, it, it's a hard question. Uh, for those who disagree with me, I totally get it. You, you could rail against all the inherent corruption going on and how just how sick and twisted and evil our culture has become and, and our political powers. And I would just probably be nodding and be like, yep, 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 got very good points, very good points. <laughs> I wouldn't have a lot to say. Uh, but I wrestle with this question, and I think it's important that we wrestle, even if we don't come to an affirmative yes or no that we can all agree with, it's an important question for any warrior 
uh, to be able to grapple with. If you're going to be a protector, you've got to know what's worth dying for and what's worth living for and hold those things very clearly in your mind so when the dark hour descends upon you, there is no doubt. There is no cloud coming in. We have to be clear-headed to be able to do dangerous work. So, I hope that this was uh, a helpful little diatribe for you guys. Make sure you hit like. That really helps. Comment down below for the algorithm. Share this video because Big Tech isn't going to help us grow. Consider joining our Warrior Poet Society Network. It's a streaming service where we can own our own content. We have some binge-worthy shows. Uh, we have uh, training classes, more and more training classes. So my training class, pistol and rifle and all that stuff is uh, there as well as some backed up YouTube content out there from other uh, gun tubers. We're doing a lot of good, but we need some help. So anyway, guys, uh, train hard, train smart, and for the love of God, stay free. The only way to get good at gunfighting is to do gunfighting. There's no other way around it. You can practice draw strokes ad nauseum. You can get really good at fundamentals and emergency reloads, maybe even run around a flat range shooting at some steel targets, but there is no substitute for force on force training. What we do in Pistol 3, aside from teaching some really important skills, some combative elements, a little bit of tactics bringing in, is we allow students to revel in the chaos and the confusion, the adrenaline of a real force-on-force -force encounter. 